Bring me to HB 1705 FNA. Allowing the purchase and use of marijuana by adults. Regulating the purchase and use of marijuana. Imposing taxes on the wholesale and retail sale of marijuana. Hello. Um, my name is Chris Smith and I'm a victim of the long war in American history. I've had the privilege of caring for people as a registered nurse for over 30 years of my life. I actually graduated from Concord Hospital School of Nursing in 1975. I was arrested for growing marijuana in November 2009. I grew my own for medical reasons and for my daughter who has bipolar. After 30 years of nursing, I have a cumulative damage to my back, so chronic lower back pain, and I chose marijuana instead of addicting pharmaceutical painkillers. I recently lost my appeal based on law enforcement violating my privacy as they were 30 feet from the back wall of my house, looking through my window. I will soon be going to prison if my sentence was two to four years with a $10,000 fine. I was told at my sentencing that, this, that where I grew marijuana was not Manchester or Nashua. And <coughs> They have to make an example of me. I have endured two years of slow torture since my arrest. I have been prosecuted by the federal and state government, including forfeiture in my home. I had to pay $51,000 to keep my home. I had to pay a lawyer $24,000. I am financially and emotionally depleted. And right now I feel like this will never end. Marijuana should be legalized. Adults should have the right to the benefit from marijuana, which is less harmful than alcohol, pharmaceutical drugs, tobacco, or even coffee. I would like you to stop this war on our people. Lives like mine, a normal, decent person, are being destroyed, and this is harmful to all of our society. The laws are antiquated and severe and more harmful to our society than the plants could ever be. <coughs> Thank you. Any questions? Thank you very much. Thank you. No, I just wrote that what I wanted to say. You'll take it if you want to read it. Okay. Thank you very much. Ma'am, I'm just curious about because you grew it whether it would be a daughter, and I feel bad for whatever. But was mm -hmm. there anything that you couldn't get medically oh, yeah, that she, would help not, well, in any way? She did take pharmaceutical drugs and they were terrible, terrible side effects. She was dull and she had her seasonal, um, I can't describe it to you, it was medical. She had side effects from them that, and, and she did not want to take Okay, and she was not going to take them, and she insisted that mm -hmm. um, marijuana helped, mm -hmm. and it did help her, it kept her condition. And if, if you know anything about bipolar, it's, um, it's actually devastating when they're manic, as well as when they're depressed, because when they're manic, they don't recognize danger. They kind of feel in, invulnerable, and they'll do all kinds of things that you would never expect. And, that are life threatening. Okay. Aside from gaining over the bridge and, and contemplating suicide when you're in depressive phase. And I, you know, marijuana has a lot of medical uses that the government does not want to admit. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you for taking the question. Um, from past experience, can you <coughs> Tell us the difference between taking a painkiller long term and the effects or the loss of effects it can create compared to taking marijuana long term. Pharmaceutical drugs can lead to all kinds of side effects, liver damage. Um, you obviously can't operate, you know, machinery in it, you know, and you know, they dull your senses and <coughs> um, I, you know, they're much more habit forming. You know, when I was arrested, after I was arrested, obviously I suddenly stopped smoking marijuana and I had no side effects. 
The intent of the, my question was, yeah. and probably should have been a little more clear, does the taking of medical marijuana have a lasting effect in reducing your pain compared to if you took uh, prescription medication long term? Whereas like Vicodin, right. Vicodin after time, if you take it long term, the effects diminish. The oh. body becomes immune to it, would you believe? I actually don't know because the Lord made the choice based on my experience uh, in nursing and seeing people being addicted to painkillers that I just didn't want to go that route. And, um, you know, I wouldn't um, smoke until the end of the day when my pain had gotten, you know, severe <coughs> and I would just smoke like half a joint or a joint and I would be fine and, and you know, be able to go to bed and, and sleep through the night. I'm just trying to figure out if medical marijuana uh, is different compared to a prescription medication. Does it wear off, wear off at all long term using it? I, I think people can develop some um, resistance and maybe need more. Okay. Would you feel more comfortable? Having your daughter smoke marijuana or take a pharmaceutical over the long term? I smoke marijuana. And she's a, you know, she's an intelligent person. She's a, um, has a, uh, a degree. And uh, she, she doesn't want to take pharmaceuticals either. So. When your daughter had all this, and we were talking about the bill about they can sell one ounce in the store. How many ounces of that in order to help your daughter to take for her to feel better? Um, I don't know. Well, well yeah, know. she would only smoke it two or three times a week. So uh, how many ounces? Um, and I was, I was smoking roughly one ounce a month. So I would say half an ounce possibly for her a month. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.